Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about block cleaning, prep, and paint. Whew, if you guys are just catching up and it's your first time here, the reason we're doing this is that last episode we tore down the engine because I had an oil pressure problem and we found a couple root causes. Number one root cause was a bad PCV system that created too much sludge and created which resulted in oil starvation and metal on metal contact with the bearing. So start uh, some premature bearing wear. And in tearing those bearings apart, I also found debris from a lifter that exploded on me over a year ago. And I did a piss poor job of cleaning the block back then. I was in too much of a rush to get the new lifters in, not even thinking that's my fault. So don't do what I did. <laughs> if you have a lifter, uh, drop on you or shatter or wear out a cam you have to take apart the whole engine which is what we did now in in that episode I showed you some significant scoring on the cylinders and the pistons so I had to um, get the cylinders honed I just got the block back and I stripped it down I don't have the caps on as you can see the, the engine block is actually upside down and you can see in here the cylinders look fantastic yep they look nice. I also got new cam bearings. And when you get new cam bearings, you have to get them dressed, they call it, because they're not going to be straight. Uh, most old blocks are going to settle uh, and going to warp a little bit. So when you put new cam bearings in, even though the, each bearing is perfect, they're not going to be cylindrical. So make sure you take it to an expert, get your uh, bearings dressed so you can easily turn your cam after it's installed. So I had that done. Now the block is dirty and needs paint and we also have to clean out the inside of it to make sure we have no more debris and no more machining fluid for when they hone the cylinders and they dress the bearings. So that's what we're going to do today. So to start things off, we're going to work our way outside in. So we're going to take the paint off the block as much as we can. The last time I painted the block, I used some really good primer. So I'm actually going to be happy if we can just get down to primer and then we can repaint. So we're going to clean from the outside in, and my favorite thing to do for paint removal, and feel free guys, if you have another idea for paint removal, leave a comment below. There's really no wrong answer, but I like to use brake cleaner with a wire brush. I like these because it's got a little end here so you can get in the nooks and crannies. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you real quick how, how it works but I'm going to spend a couple of hours probably taking all the exterior down to either metal or primer and take up getting all the RTV off and then we'll go to the next step. Real quick, this is what I do with the brake cleaner. I just douse the entire area, let it soak a little bit and then you can actually start scrubbing. See how the paint comes off and we're down to primer. That gray is primer. So I'm actually okay with that, but I'm going to do the whole thing and even pivot the engine so this face is straight up and then it will pull the brake cleaner and makes it really easy to clean and then wipe it off with a, a paper towel. All right, six cans of brake cleaner later. This is how clean I got it. Now I'm okay with the 2% of color that's still left on the block. I've scrubbed it. Uh, I'm really okay with the primer. If any primer is left over, that means it's a good primer. And I'll show you what primer I used the first time because we're going to use it again later in this episode. Um, some, some tricks there with the brake cleaner. I also like to hit all the threaded holes that require thread lock. So make sure you hit all of those. It's best to do it from underneath so it drips out. So like I also cleaned all the head bolt areas by turning the engine upside down. And... Other thing, don't forget, is that paint has to go somewhere. So save your floor and get some pig mat. Look at that. That's where the color ends up. So, yeah, you should see my driveway. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, sorry, honey. Yeah, the, the driveway is blue. Get over it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so after you're done with that, you probably have RTV left on some of your gasketed areas. It doesn't come off that easy. Even with the razor blade, the trick is a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Let me show you how it works. 
All right, it might be tough to tell, but there's this black. You can feel, you can feel it. It feels like rubber. I mean, it does not feel like steel. So it's RTV that's left over. It's actually not critical to take all of this off because the RTV will re-stick to it. But while you're here and cleaning it, you might as well get all of it off. So you take your magic eraser. I like to put a little bit of brake cleaner on it. See it coming off? It's coming off on there. So that is my trick to get RTV off. It works on some of the other areas that you miss some paint too. That might be loose. Yes, it tears up the Mr. the the magic eraser, but not to worry because the next step is we're going to do a full clean of the block inside and out. Now that we're done with the magic eraser, Take your air compressor, blow everything out because my magic eraser looks like this after I was done. And you know where the pieces are? Inside your engine and on the floor. So make sure you blow it off, get all those chunks out because it's now, now it's dry. Our next step is actually to degrease the, the entire engine. And I like to use this stuff called Super Clean. It's, this is a foamy one, and they actually have a newer product that actually comes in a can. I'm going to try that today, too. Uh, but you let that soak in. Use a, your favorite um, scrub brush. Get in all the nooks and crannies, and then use a... If you're on the outside of the engine, it's okay to use a paper towel. Use a white paper towel. You can see if there's any dirt residue. Keep doing it until it's clean. On the inside of the engine, try and use a lint-free cloth or lint-free paper towel because you don't want to leave a, a ton of debris behind in the engine because we're now getting to the point of making this a lab environment. We have to keep it clean. Now, all the orifices that you might have in the engine, like I removed the uh, oil galley plugs. I bought this, um, this set on Amazon. It's actually for an aquarium to clean out your aquarium. This one brush here is super long. So that can actually run up and down the oil galley. So that's pretty cool. So I'll use the other brushes uh, on other oil ports on the engine with the degreaser. And then you just rinse it off with water. Now the important fact here is after you rinse it off with water, make sure after it dries, blow it out again, hit it with WD-40 because you don't want it, it to flash. If you're painting immediately after this, that's great. You don't have to do the outside, but I'm going to do the whole block. And then when I show you the masking and painting trick, I'll show you what I use to degrease for paint. But that being said, let me show you a quick example of how to do it with a, with a squirt bottle. But I'm going to do this on my driveway because I'm going to use the hose when I hose it off. Give me a second. All right, here's the, the spray on stuff from the squirt bottle. It's foamy. Uh, you let it soak in. You can rub it around. So like I said, in the exterior of the engine, if you want to use a white paper towel, you can do that. And you notice how that's not wet, that's actually dirty. So you want to keep doing that until it's totally, see how dirty that is? We want to keep doing this until it's nice and clean. And then using water, we rinse it off. I would take my air compressor and dry it off with the air, with the air compressor and then hit it in, with WD-40. For the cylinders, same thing. We want to remove all oils and machining, cutting fluid, whatever they use to cut the block. Remove that from the cylinder. So I'm just going to spray my lint-free cloth and just go to town. You'll notice. See that? That's dirty. So we're going to keep doing this to every cylinder until you do not get dirt. You want it to look like this. Comprende? That's dirty. So we're going to keep doing that. I know it's tedious, guys, but you want to do the right thing. I didn't do this the second rebuild. Shame on me. And then after we're done with that, hit it with WD-40. We do the same thing. Coat this with WD-40. Run it up and down. And you might get some more residue on there, so keep doing it until it's clean. But it'll be coated with WD-40 so it doesn't rust. Okay, I've been dying to see how this works. Here we go. Whoa, nice. So where I can, I'm going to jam it through the oil passages. So this is for the cam bearings. 
Watch it come out the bottom here. Little noodle. See that crap that just came out? Tough to see, but there's some crap right there that came out of the can bearing hole. Now with that um, pipe cleaner set I got on Amazon for the cleaning aquariums, pick a good one and clean out some of the can bearing passages. And we can also get the oil passages in the lifter bores. A little water. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna let it dry and then do one more round of that cleaner because I really like that foamy cleaner and then I'll spot check. Uh, for, for any debris and dry it off and then do our uh, WD-40 especially on the cylinders that I showed you guys earlier and we're, we're good for the next step. Our guys not even dry yet and it's already flashing see that? So it's okay to hit it with WD-40 use your hand with a gloved hand don't use any cloth on that because it'll probably catch and create fibers in there and then make sure you get in the ports coat those with WD-40. I already did the cylinders cylinders look awesome course so finish that up be right back okay after you WD-40 everything and your cylinders uh, your lifter bores everything you want to bag it so I happen to have a leftover bag from my uh, engine machinist but you can use a big plastic trash bag you do not want dust to stick to that WD-40 because it'll happen almost immediately so we want to keep everything as clean as possible and now when we work around our bare steel parts wear gloves treat it like a lab that's why you see professional uh, engine builders in lab coats because they do not want dust and lint in the engine if you could prevent it now something I pointed out earlier with the um, aquarium cleaner um, pipe cleaner things. I thought this was going to be really cool to stick down the oil galley. Well, I got about six inches down and I said, you know what? I'm going to pull it out. Yeah. Inserting a joke there. Yeah. It came off in the oil galley. I spent like a half an hour trying to get this out. So uh, if you go to do that, make sure you test it first or figure out how to put this on there. So I didn't do the whole oil galley. Um, if you guys don't have this foam cleaner, which I really liked. It, I mean, the, the way it expands, you can tell it gets everywhere. I only had to do it twice. I had no more residue. And the proof of that was how the rust was flashing. If there was any kind of oil on the uh, inside of the block, it wouldn't have flashed. It would have been coated with oil. So proof that this worked great. I love it. Now, if you don't have this, you can use dish soap and hot water. You just have to do it a couple extra times so you can get away with that now I'm excited because we can actually make some progress and get some color on the block and we're gonna go through the painting process next I just don't think we have time for it in this video so it's gonna be the next video so you guys thanks for sticking around subscribe if you haven't it's gonna be fun and until next time build them fast drive them faster see ya